Hi guys, and welcome to Homestead Where You Are. Um, I picked, as many of you know, 64 pounds of plums. And I juiced about half of them, I think it was about close to 30 pounds that I juiced. I put some in the freezer and then I put some in the refrigerator. And I was on my live last week, I was talking to some of you guys, trying to get some ideas of what to do with some of these plums. And I ended up doing a little bit of research and I decided to take some of your advice and I ordered a wine making kit because I did not have the equipment needed for this. So this comes with the initial fermenting bucket. Uh, this is the carboy for transferring the wine into so that it can uh, go through its second ferment. It comes with a auto siphon. The tube that goes to the siphon. Uh, and this is the what they call it, a bung, I think they call it, which goes right there. This is the debubbler, which goes in here. And this is so that um, the gases and stuff can be released and uh, oxygen and bacteria and stuff like that cannot get in. You fill this about halfway with water and it allows the gases to escape. It came with a sanitizing powder so that you can make a solution for sanitizing everything. During all my research, that's the one thing I'm finding is definitely the most important, consistent fact that everybody says is you must keep everything sanitized, your hands, all your equipment, your spoons, all that kind of stuff. This is a straining bag. And I have seen people do it both ways. Some people just put their fruit directly in the bucket and strain it later. And some people put their fruit inside the bag. And that way when they're ready, they can just pull the bag out. And you have all of your, what they call, I guess, must, but all of your scraps, your um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your pulp and all that stuff is left in the bag. And these are uh, washable and reusable. And I had to write some of this stuff down so that I would remember what was for what. Um, came with a packet of acid blend, uh, which is supposed to be if your fruit doesn't have a high enough starting acid then you would use this. It came with a packet of potassium sorbate. Um, this is used at the end uh, when you're done fermenting and you're getting ready to sweeten your wine, especially if you're going to back sweeten. Um, this will stop the fermentation process um, so that it won't continue to ferment and explode your bottles and stuff like that. This is a packet of Camden tablets. Um, this one will, when you first put your fruit in, uh, in the bucket, it will kill the harmful bacterias and neutralize any wild yeast that is in your fruit. Came with a pectic enzyme. which it says is supposed to increase the yield of juice from your fruit. It also helps it to clear um, because they say, especially fruits that are higher in pectin, but uh, they can have a what they call a pectic haze. Um, but this will help to clear up the juice, or the wine actually, so that it becomes crystal clear. This is a packet of wine tannin, 
which is used to, I didn't write it down because it's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, you'll notice in especially commercial wines, they have a, oh, almost like a woody back flavor um, that comes from the stems and things like that from the grapes and also especially the ones who um, age their wine in like oak barrels and things like that you, you get that woody oak flavor in your wine so if that is something that you like um, this that's what this is for it came with three packets of yeast each one of these can do uh, five gallons of juice um, so like in my case this is for doing this kit is for doing one gallon at a time this is five grams so I would use one gram for doing one gallon and then it came with a yeast nutrient to keep your yeast nice and happy I heard it explained in one of the videos, just like we need vitamins and things to keep our bodies happy, uh, the yeast, like the yeast nutrients, to keep, uh, keep them nice and happy. And then it also came with this is just a little thing that tells you what the equipment is and what it's for. Um, and the basic rundown on how to make wine and then it also came with a recipe handbook so it will tell you uh, there's lots of different recipes in, in here anything from your typical apple peach uh, there's banana there's many different types of grape ones because you can kind of learn how to do the different you know a white wine a rosé a red wine um, the different sweet wines and dry wines and all that fun stuff and then there's even some strange ones like turnip and onion and stuff like that in here but anyway it gives you step-by-step -step instructions you can even make brandy um, it tells you how to do based on what fruit you're using how much of each item you're going to need and all that so okay so the first thing I'm going to do now is I am going to clean this bucket and then I'm going to mix up some of the sanitizer solution in here and put some in a spray bottle um, that way I can spray items this is a food grade it's you can spray it on let it dry for a minute and and use the items you don't have to worry about it altering the flavors you don't have to worry about it causing any problems at all and so all the all the stuff I was seeing said to put some in a spray bottle. That way you can always spray things. That way if you touch something, you can turn around and spray your hand and not have to worry about it. So then after I put some of the solution in my spray bottle, I'm going to take the couple of pieces of equipment that I'll be using today and put them in the sanitizer water. Well, I'll clean them first. Put them in the sanitizer and get them ready. And then we'll go from there. All right, so this is one teaspoon per gallon of warm water. these up real good and make sure that the, the those crystals dissolve all right now 
I don't really need this today. But I'm going to go ahead and sanitize it by using it to fill my spray bottle. So I know today that I'm going to need my stainless steel spoon for stirring. All right, so I'm going to need the one teaspoon and I'm going to need a half teaspoon. All right, so I'm going to put that down in there. All right, I'm going to need a bowl to measure out my sugar. And that's it besides my plums. I'm also going to need this. So I will not be using any of this stuff today. Oh, and I'm also going to put my straining cloth in here. take all these items out so they can dry. Right, this calls for four pounds of plums. This has got a little over five pounds in the bag, so I'm going to take a few out. All right, so I believe that's close enough. I'm going to spray my cutting board. All I'm really trying to do here is get the seed out, so I'm kind of smashing it up as I go because they're very soft. I don't think I need the knife, actually. Well, I might for some. Now, from everything that I'm seeing, there are lots of things that I could do um, to tweak it, to get it more like what you like. Um, you know, acid levels, types of acids, just there's all kinds of things that go along with it. But since this is my first time, I am going to follow the recipe. And then I will know what to do from there. You know what? I was supposed to put this in the straining bag. Hmm. Guess I could do that before I start adding all of my water and sugar and all that stuff. So I've got a quart and a half of hot water here, and I'm measuring out my two pounds of sugar. I'm 
going to stir this until it dissolves. And I'm just using the same bowl that I was doing the plums into because it's all going in the same place anyway. All right, now half teaspoon acid blend. Half teaspoon pectin enzyme. One teaspoon yeast nutrient. And one Camden tablet. All of the videos that I watched, they just crushed it between two spoons. all that's mixed in. Okay, so now I'm going to pour it over my plums. I'm going to put the lid on. And it says at this stage not to completely seal it. I don't like the way it's sticking up, which means things could get into it. Right, I'm going to put that over the top. <laughs> That's lovely. So I don't know if that says something about the quality of the bucket or what. Try this again. See, that doesn't fit in there. Hmm. Wow. That is supposed to fit in there to block off that hole. That's not working. So, what do I do? I know this is ugly, but it is clean. So I'm just going to lay that over, and lay that on top of it, and then I will put this in my pantry for 24 hours, and we will come back to it tomorrow. Okay hey guys, so I had this sitting in my cabinet in the house overnight. I'm going to take this off now. Put my spoon in here. Okay, so this little thing does about five gallons. And I've seen some people where they add the whole packet, but there's no need in that because it's going to replicate on its own and it just seems like a waste to me. So I'm going to take, uh, it's not, it's about a half a teaspoon or so. I'm going to sprinkle it over the top. So my yeast is now added to my mixture. Now i got to see... Go ahead and spray this again. i got to see if I can get this thing on there like it's supposed to be. See, it just wants to push the rubber piece down inside. Hmm. 
I was afraid that was going to happen. So here's what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take this bag and set it on here. Let it drain a little bit. Let's see if I can push some of this out. Yes, I did sanitize my hands and everything before I started this. And I did sanitize this strainer. I know you didn't see me do that, but I had anticipated this. So I had already sanitized it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sanitize this jug. I'm going to go ahead and transfer it into here. I know normally I would need to leave it in that bucket a little bit longer, but I'm going to have to figure out another solution for my initial fermenter because that airlock is not fitting on the lid like it's supposed to. I should have had this down on the ground so that the hose would go straight down into it. But I was trying to get this on camera, so I don't mind if I have to pump it a few times. Okay, and I know I want to have this all the way up to about here, at the top of the neck of the bottle. Or the bottom of the neck, I guess should, should should say. So I am going to top it off with some of the plum juice. And especially since I know we didn't get all of the juice extracted from those plums. All right, so now I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. Now I'm going to set this back in the house and I'm going to want to stir it every day so I'm going to get a long handled spoon where I can get the handle down in there that I will sanitize and stir it up a little bit each day but after about a day or two we'll start to see all the bubbles coming in from this as it starts to ferment so that's where we're at right now and we will see what happens tomorrow. Stay tuned for part two to see how the wine turns out. And if you like this video, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And if you like this channel want to see more content like this, please remember to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of any future videos. And as always, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And I will see you on the next one.